Hello everybody, this is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming News with Paul and Adrian. This is June the 26th, 2024. I want to welcome you to our broadcast again today. This is our second video. I don't know how many we'll have to do today, but if it's, this is your first time here, please make sure that you are subscribed to our channel and hit that black notification bell so you won't miss any of our breaking news. So many things are happening in the world and you need to be updated uh, almost on an hourly basis, folks, because things are accelerating on the war front. We have so much breaking apocalyptic news, World War III news, the end of the world news, that it is so hard uh, to keep up with everything that's going on. So uh, if it couldn't have got any worse, we have news coming in that North Korea will be sending combat troops to Ukraine. I repeat, North Korea will be sending combat troops to Ukraine to fight against the Ukrainian military. So um, as you guys should already know, President Vladimir Putin made a historic visit to North Korea just a few weeks ago. And Kim Jong-un and President Putin had signed a comprehensive military agreement, uh, basically a security agreement, that uh, North Korea would come to the aid of Russia and that Russia would come to the aid of North Korea in a major war. So now we have breaking news that uh, North Korea is going to be sending uh, an expeditionary small force to Ukraine, probably to get everything set up for a much larger force that will follow later. So this is uh, this is an emergency alert, folks. This is breaking news that World War III is now spreading to involve other nations besides Russia. We have major, major news coming in from the Middle East. We're going to cover that in a few minutes. But let's go ahead and get to our lead story here that North Korea is going to enter the war against Ukraine on the side of Russia. This is breaking news that you won't hear anywhere else. Well, you will hear it, but probably a little bit later. We try to uh, <clears throat> to get the news out first for you guys. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. This is coming from a British publication called The Express. World on the brink as North Korea sends cannon fodder troops to Ukraine. The North Korean unit is expected to arrive in Ukraine as soon as next month, raising fears that Polyong is becoming an active combatant in the war. North Korea is to send military units to Ukraine in support of Russia's war as fear grows of a critical escalation in the conflict. Last week, Putin made uh, an official state visit to North Korea, the first time in 24 years that he had traveled to the country. The Russian leader and his host, Kim Jong-un, signed a defense pact on June 19th in Polyong, promising military assistance to one another. And let me get this a little bit bigger for you. <clears throat> Within days of signing the agreement, North Korea had announced it will be sending a unit of military engineers to join Russia's army on the ground in the Donetsk region. So this is a picture of President Putin uh, 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 walking down the red carpet in front of a military uh, line of soldiers. North Korean, the North Korean unit is expected to arrive in Ukraine as soon as next month. That will be July, raising fears that Polyong is becoming an active combatant in the war. The country is already supplying Russia with ammunition and missiles and is reported to have shipped as many as 1.6 million artillery shells to Putin's army. A spokesman for the Pentagon said North Korean troops would be sent to their slaughter and question the wisdom of the deployment. <clears throat> Pat Ryder told journalists at a briefing, I think that if I were North Korean military personnel management, 
I would be questioning my choices on sending my forces to be cannon fodder in an illegal war against Ukraine. Well, Pat Ryder, I want to ask you, was it legal to overthrow the legitimate government of Ukraine? Pat Ryder, uh, one of the USA spokesperson for the White House, Mr. Pat Ryder, was it legal for our CIA to overthrow the legitimate government of Ukraine in 2014? Answer that, sir. Would you please give us an answer that our country, our CIA, overthrew a legitimate government? So you can say anything you want, but uh, folks, we are responsible for this war. Pat Ryder also added that the United States would continue to monitor the ever-deepening military ties between the two countries. So this is uh, looks like it's going to happen, folks. This is breaking news coming in uh, this morning uh, that uh, North Korea will be sending combat troops to Ukraine. So this will probably be the first uh, contingent of North Korean soldiers. They have to set up logistics. So if North Korea does plan on sending a large force, you send in first the military engineers to get everything set up, where they're going to be based, uh, where their equipment is going to be landing. So uh, this is historic agreement. Also, President Putin went to Vietnam after his trip to North Korea to sign a similar agreement. We really don't have the details of the Vietnam trip, what they actually did, but we do on the North Korean. So, folks, this is escalating, like I said, on all of our other videos for at least the last two years. The last two years we've been talking about this extensively on our channel that once World War III breaks out, it will involve the nations of Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, Israel, Lebanon, Syria, Turkey, Egypt, Japan, the United States of America, NATO, France, Germany, all of the countries. That's why it is called a world war. And I believe it will go nuclear very, very quickly. Because, listen, the United States government does not have, we don't have the forces to fight on all four of those military theaters at one time. We don't have the military, folks. The last time the United States sent a significant number of soldiers to battle was during Desert Storm when we attacked Iraq under General Schwarzkopf. Do you remember that? We sent 500,000 500, combat soldiers to Iraq in the first invasion of Desert Storm. And I don't believe that we can amass a force to fight like that. That was just one theater, folks, and that was not against a peer-to-peer -peer adversary. And... Um, the military that we have today are woke military because all the good, I believe that most of all the good military uh, generals and colonels and captains and our military echelon had already retired. They were forced to get out of our military. Obama uh, cleaned house. Obama got rid of the patriots in our military, folks. He gutted the military. So did Biden. So only thing that is left are people that are loyal to the Biden administration, the woke military. And do you know what the Gen Z, the Generation Z, the lipstick wearing, high heel wearing, hair dyeing uh, recruits that are being recruited into our military, do you think they're capable of fighting Russia? There still are a lot of good military left, folks. You know, people that were called up in all of this uh, uh, transgender, whatever you want to call it, uh, things that's going on. But um, the only thing I can tell you, I had an article about that. The only thing I can tell you is that um, 
Our military is not what it used to be, folks. Our military is not what it used to be. And this is the problem right here. You remember uh, during George Bush, George Bush had a policy of don't ask, don't tell. Remember, don't ask, don't tell. Well, folks, uh, that has been thrown out the window. Now uh, we have issues like this coming up in the news media. Joe Biden to issue pardons over the gay sex ban. So this is breaking news coming out. The U.S. president has reportedly decided to grant clemency to ex-soldiers who were prosecuted under previous military law. U.S. President Joe Biden has reportedly decided to pardon military veterans who were convicted over decades passed under a sodomy law that criminalized gay sex among service members. Here's two, um, two lovers right here. It looks like an army, uh, two army soldiers. Aren't they just cute, folks? The pardon proclamation, which will grant clemency to about 2,000 former troops, is expected to be announced on Wednesday. That is today. CNN reported citing three unnamed U.S. government officials. The proclamation will enable those who were convicted under military's former sodomy law to apply for a formal certificate of pardon, which will help clear the records and allow them to receive withheld benefits. The military ban on sodomy, including consensual gay sex, has stood from 1951 until the law was rewritten by Congress in 2013. That's when Obama took power. I believe around that time, that revision came two years after then President Barack Obama repeated the military's don't ask, don't tell policy, uh, repealed the military's don't ask, don't tell policy, which banned openly gay people from enlistment. Uh, so this is, um, this is what we have to face on our military folks, that uh, we have uh, our military right now. that uh, this is the military that we're going to be sending to fight Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea. I'm not saying the entire military is like that, but I am saying that our government, the United States government, and the United States military is openly pushing this agenda on America. Our State Department is pushing this agenda around the world, the LGBTQ agenda, the transgender agenda. So, folks, all I can tell you is that we're in trouble. We are in trouble. There was a law since 1951 that had criminal, criminal uh, prosecution for gay sex in the military. We used to prosecute those people because it goes against God's laws. Do you think God Almighty approves of our military right now? Do you think God Almighty approves of our government? Of the way America has slid down the slippery slope and embraced an abomination to him? Do you know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah, folks? Do you have a Bible? Do you have a Bible? Do you know what your Bible says? God does not condone that kind of behavior. God does not condone that lifestyle, he doesn't, folks. That's not my opinion. Listen, this is not my opinion. You can do whatever you want to do. That's your, that's your life. You can live your life. But don't force it down the throats of American citizens, folks. And don't push it as a government directive. Don't promote this stuff from a government level. And that's what we've done. So do you really think God's going to bless a nation that promotes this kind of lifestyle, folks. Listen, God is a holy God. God is a righteous God. He's not going to bless a nation that openly accepts an abomination to him. So that's all I can say on the subject, folks. Like I said, if you're living that lifestyle, you have a right to do that. This is America. But you don't have a right to push this on children. Uh, and our government doesn't have a right to promote this. I'm sorry. You know, do what you want 
behind closed doors in your own house. If that's the kind of lifestyle you want to live, fine. You, you, you have that right to do that. But I don't believe our government is taking the correct uh, stance on this issue. And I don't think God's going to bless a nation that openly promotes sodomy around the world. That's just my, this is my soapbox, folks. You can disagree with me, and I don't have any, I don't hate, uh, I don't hate the LGBTQ crowd, you know? I don't hate anybody. If God is going to judge somebody, he's going to judge them, right? I'm just worried about my own salvation. You know, we all have to stand before God ourselves at the judgment seat of God, of Christ, for everything that you have done in your body. We individually. So, you know, do what you want to do. That's your own life. But I don't think our military and the United States State Department and government should be pushing this, <coughs> excuse me, around the world. So that's some of the breaking news we have. North Korea will be sending uh, engineer combat troops. This probably is the first contingent uh, that will be sent to Ukraine. They want combat experience, folks. Basically, this is what it's about. We reported last year that there were Chinese observers in Ukraine. Chinese military observers finding out how Russia is fighting the war. Because Russia is basically fighting a war against NATO. Everything that you see happening in Ukraine right now is under NATO management. Folks, if you give somebody money and you give them equipment and you give them training and you give them everything that you need, well, you are running the war. You're running the war. The big deception is that Ukraine is running their own war. That's not true. Generals in our Pentagon, generals in NATO, our State Department, we are the ones that are calling the shots in Ukraine against Russia. Don't let anybody fool you, folks. This, from day one, has been a war between Russia and NATO. Not Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine is just the proxy battlefield that we have decided to fight Russia through. And Russia is winning the war, so NATO has no other choice but to get massively involved in the war. And that's what we're going to see. That I do believe this summertime, in the next two or three months, I don't know the exact day, but at some point in the near future, you are going to see active military troops being inserted into Ukraine. It could happen this year. But Joe Biden is preparing the way. I did have an article on that. Let me see if I can find it. <clears throat> We've got a lot of articles here for you. <clears throat> so let me get this next one on the screen here. Like I said, there is so much news coming in on a daily basis that... Uh, I would basically have to be here live, but I can't do that, folks. I'm not up to doing 24-hour uh, coverage. Lifting the de facto ban of U.S. troops in Ukraine by Biden. Green light for the deployment of American forces in Ukraine. NATO Army follows. So this is breaking news. It actually came out yesterday, but we did not do another update last night. The front and the mobilization of the Ukrainians have collapsed. <coughs> so the United States military is now going to allow contractors like Blackwater and all of these military contractors to be inserted into Ukraine. And after that happens, then you will see regular NATO troops, U.S. boots on the ground. U.S. President Joe Biden gives the green light to American forces to deploy in Ukraine, according to American media. With the Ukrainian military going from bad to worse, 
and the front now collapsing, the deployment of the first U.S. forces owned by private military companies like Academia, uh, and I'm sure not how to pronounce that, Academy, Academy, or Blackwater, it used to be Blackwater, was deemed the only way to go. So remember what happened in, um, <clears throat> in Iraq during Desert Storm? The United States, we used Blackwater and a lot of these private military contractors to fight in the war uh, with the Iraqis. These are mercenaries, folks. These are guns for hire. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to send in Blackwater, uh, these military contractors. American forces will be deployed in Ukraine. The Biden administration is moving forward, lifting a de facto ban on U.S. private military companies deploying to Ukraine. Four U.S. officials with knowledge of the matter told CNN the change would mark yet another major shift in the Biden administration's Ukraine policy as the U.S. looks for ways to help Ukraine's military against Russia. The development shows that we are in the vestibule of the deployment of regular U.S. and NATO forces. And that's because private American companies are the long arm of the current government and the country's Department of Defense, as Wagner was for Russia, or Wagner. The green light for companies like Blackwater or Academia, I'm sure not how to pronounce that, A-C-A-D-E-M-I, 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 whatever, to deploy forces in Ukraine together with some bills of Vladimir Zelensky to bring regular American forces through the back door to Ukraine. Once approved, <clears throat> the change likely to be in implemented this year, officials said, would allow the Pentagon to award contracts to U.S. companies for work inside Ukraine for the first time since Russia invaded in 2022. U.S. officials said that they hoped the move would speed up maintenance and repairs of weapon systems used by the Ukrainian military. Of course, U.S. forces will prepare the ground for the entries of NATO forces. Step-by-step <clears throat> step of the American escalation. In May, in late May, Biden gave Ukraine permission to strike targets inside Russia near the border with the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv with U.S. weapons, a request the U.S. has repeatedly denied in the past last week that policy was extended once again when National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said that Ukraine could strike back anywhere along the Ukraine-Russian border using weapons. Next comes the revelation about the F-16 fighter jets that we're going to give to Ukraine and their bases in Romania and Poland. At the same time, NATO is building logistical hubs and bases in Poland on the border with Ukraine, but also in Romania, while it is proceeding with the improvement of road accesses in the area of the Suwaki Corridor. Current and former, former, current and former officials familiar with the discussions about the deployment of U.S. forces in Ukraine stressed that the policy change would not lead to a large deployment <clears throat> excuse me, of U.S. forces by private companies as in Iraq and Afghanistan. But this does not seem to correspond to reality, although the Americans deny it so far. <clears throat> this would be much more focused effort to support Ukraine in the country, said retired Army officer Alex Widman, who served <clears throat> as director of European Affairs on former President Donald Trump's National Security Council. Widman has been pushing the administration to lift the restrictions for two years 
and said the administration has been working on a plan to ease restrictions since <clears throat> the beginning of the year. He said, Ukraine is our ally, Vindman told CNN. The U.S. has strong critical national security interests in supporting Ukraine, and there are many risk mitigation measures in place. So this does look like it's going to happen, that the United States military will be sending in uh, contractors, folks. We're going to be sending in our uh, contractors like Blackwater, <clears throat> like these other uh, security agencies that are private mercenary groups. So this is happening. Everything that I told you over two years ago is now coming true, and people did not want to believe me, folks. But we've been on the forefront of breaking all of these news stories. I told you before anybody that NATO was planning the largest attack against Russia since a World War II, <clears throat> that we're assembling over 500,000 NATO troops in Europe right now to not only invade Ukraine, but also Belarus, Kaliningrad, and Russia itself. <clears throat> so this is going down. It's probably going to start this summer. July 4th is coming up. And I really don't know who's going to attack first. Will it be the United States in a first strike against Russia? Or will Russia preemptively do a first strike on our country? <clears throat> we don't know at this point. But Russia... They're going to have to do something about the U.S. Uh, RQ-4B surveillance drones flying around in the Black Sea. Because if they don't, folks, the attacks against Crimea and other Russian targets in that area will continue. If Russia does not start shooting down these drones, then uh, it's just going to continue the way it was. And eventually, Ukraine, with the help of United States military and NATO intelligence, will take out the Kerch Bridge, the Crimean Bridge. That is their ultimate goal. They want to take out the Kerch Bridge. But uh, we have so much news. I'm just going to go down the list. Let's go ahead and get to a couple articles uh, that we missed the other day. Um, everybody has been reporting on this, but I wanted to put my, my two cents in on the WikiLeaks uh, founder, Julian Assange. There was a uh, agreement reached with the United States and um, and Britain that Julian Assange would be released uh, if he pled guilty, and that is what has happened. The WikiLeaks co-founder is welcome in Colombia. Its leader said Assange is expected to avoid further jail time. So um, he has been released, uh, but uh, according to some of the information, uh, he had to delete. Um, let me see if I can find that article for you. He had to delete like 22,000 um, emails. Let me get this other article on the screen. So Julian Assange, according to the uh, the details of his release, he had to delete at least 22,000 uh, or 20,000 of the leaked documents that he exposed the United States government. All 20,000 leaked Democratic National Committee emails were deleted from WikiLeaks server, part of the Assange deal. <clears throat> Uh, today, all 20,000 emails from the Democratic National Committee <clears throat> were deleted off of WikiLeaks servers, presumably as part of the Julian Assange plea bargain. Julian Assange was instructed to direct WikiLeaks to destroy any remaining classified documents and information in their possession and provide an affidavit once completed as part of his plea agreement. Anyone who has ever remotely followed the legal troubles of WikiLeaks' Julian Assange has known it was very political. That the powers that be were furious uh, that their secrets were exposed. So, <clears throat> like I said, this was 
this was part of the deal. But I want to put my, my two cents in. The United States government has been trying to get their hands on Julian Assange for the last five years or so. They wanted to extradite him back to the United States. So how were they going to do that? Because they would not release him where he was being held prisoner. Um, this is my take on this. So they made this plea deal with Assad. They got him to delete all the incriminating evidence, evidence against the Democrats. Now he is a dead man walking. Do you understand this? Julian Assange is a dead man walking. Now the CIA can hunt him down and kill him with one of their assets. So if you hear in the new, in near future that Jul Julian Assange died um, from eating a bowl of jello or he slipped on a banana peel or uh, a pimple on his butt got infected and blew his butt off and killed him. Uh, if you hear that Julian Assange died, uh, he fell off his balcony while bird watching. He was in a car wreck, a plane crash. Now the CIA can go after him and kill him with one of their assets like Jason Bourne. Remember the Bourne series that uh, all they do is they text uh, the picture and the hit to one of the uh, the uh, assassins just waiting to go into action? Well, he's, a, he's walking dead, folks. He's no longer protected. He's a free citizen, but he's really not free. It might not happen next week. It might not happen next month. But believe me, the CIA will get him. Uh, they will take him out. That's what they've been wanting to do. Just like Edward Snowden in Russia. Remember Edward Snowden, who uh, was an NSA analyst, and he, uh, he was a whistleblower, and he fled to China and then fled to Russia, uh, that Russia has given him residence. If the United States of America could get their hands on Edward Snowden, they would probably kill him too. Because he was a patriot, folks. I consider Julian Assange and Edward Snowden a patriot for uh, squealing on the deceitfulness and the evil that is going on in our government, folks. If you see something going on that's wrong and you know it's wrong and you keep your mouth shut, then you're no better than the government that you serve. You have, uh, <clears throat> you have the responsibility to alert citizens that uh, there are detrimental things going on that will harm American citizens. If you are a true patriot, and I consider these gentlemen a true patriot, Gonzalo Lira, I consider him a true patriot, and the United States abandoned him in Ukraine and let him be murdered. He was an American citizen, folks. Do you understand that? Gonzalo Lira, which was telling the truth in Ukraine about the Zelensky government, all the corruption, we did nothing to rescue him. He was an American citizen. We left him to be tortured and killed because we don't want the dirty little secrets to come out. The reason they don't mess with me, because I got a little teeny channel, folks. I don't hardly reach anybody. I'm no threat to them. Now, if I had a channel of a million or two million subscribers, and I had a huge audience, then they might consider messing with me. But I have been under surveillance for the last 20 years. I've told you this in previous videos, but uh, people don't want to believe me for other reasons. So, folks, I'm no threat to anybody. We come on this channel on a daily basis and try to give you the most accurate news. We don't pull any punches, folks. Listen, I'm not afraid to die. If they want to shoot me, you know, go ahead. You know, I, I, I'll be 63 this year. I've lived a pretty good life. You know, uh, it hasn't been the best. But, uh, you know, I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to leave. But, uh, you know, I'm going to keep giving you the news no matter what. Folks, you cannot fear death. Listen, listen, I'm going to give you a clue how to live your life and go to bed at night and sleep a good night's sleep. Once you conquer the fear of death, nothing can bother you. Do you understand that? Once you don't care if you live or die, you know, you're not afraid, then you can have a peaceful night's sleep. You won't really be afraid of nuclear war or what's coming because you know that once you die, you're going to be in heaven with Jesus Christ. If you live your life a righteous life,
Now, if you're a, a sinner, then uh, you should fear death because that's going to be uh, worse when you die. But as a Christian, if you believe in Jesus Christ and put your 100% faith in him, if somebody kills you or something happens, well, that's good news because you're going to be in heaven. You're not going to have to live on this crappy earth anymore, you know, because we've corrupted this earth. So, folks, conquer the fear of death. Don't fear dying. You're going to a better place if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Now, if you're a, a, a wicked sinner, then you better fear death because you're going to a worse place, a prison that you will never get out of. So these are a couple articles. Like I said, let's keep on going. We've got a lot more to cover today. Um, I'm just going to click down uh, some of these articles. Russia is ready to trap 10 Ukrainian brigades. They are moving on the front line. Uh, like a, we've been telling you for a long time that Russia is moving inch by inch, mile by mile. And the Ukrainian front line is actually um, collapsing right now, folks. We also have breaking news. A lot of other YouTube channels have been reporting this, that uh, Ukraine is preparing a dirty bomb, a false flag attack, that the materials have been transported from Poland and Romania to Ukraine. And you can bet that our CIA and our intelligence agencies had something to do with this. But this has been reported, Russia reported this last year, that Ukraine is uh, assembling a dirty bomb. And they are going to release it and blame it on Russia as a false flag. So let's go ahead and read this article. But there is probably going to be a false flag very soon in Ukraine or maybe even a NATO country or the United States to trigger the United States getting fully into this war. Ukraine will drop a nuclear bomb, Russia says. A British MP now confirms that information. Blocked to the flow of NATO information, 81 Western uh, news media outlets have closed. The bomb is almost ready, Russia says. Materials are being transported from Romania and Poland. So I do believe this is going to happen, that there is going to be some kind of false flag. They will blame it on Russia, and then NATO can get involved. Moscow, with an emergency notification of the competent Department of Radio, Biological, Chemical, and Nuclear Warfare of the Russian Army, has announced that a false flag... NATO Ukraine operation for the detonation of a nu dirty nuclear bomb is now underway. The worrying thing is that the same revelation was made by a British politician and MP who spoke of a nuclear explosion in Russia. Russia then announced that it was shutting down 81 media outlets from NATO member countries. Moscow moves seems to be part of an effort to shield Russian society from what it considers to be a NATO propaganda or hybrid war in view of a very important event for which an information war will break out. So this is how it's going to go down, folks. I believe that Ukraine's going to set off this dirty bomb. They're going to blame it on Russia. You're going to see CNN and all the Western news media. can. Uh, they are going to blame this on Russia so they can uh, go ahead and attack Russia with their own nuclear weapons. Russia materials for the creation of a dirty nuclear bomb are transported to Ukraine through Poland and Romania. Lieutenant General Igor Kurilos, in charge of the radiological, chemical, and biological defense, made an important statement regarding the activities of Ukraine and the United States in the military biological sector. As Lieutenant General uh, Kurilov noted, Substances from which a dirty nuclear bomb can be created are currently being imported into Ukraine via Poland and Romania. The import of these materials is personally supervised <clears throat> by the head of the Office of the President of Ukraine, Andriy Yermak. There is also information about the involvement 
of a former high-ranking official in the U.S. military department in the activities of creating weapons of mass destruction in Ukraine. The Kiev regime is now showing a serious interest in the developments in the field of creating such weapons and it seems is enjoying some help from the United States. In October of 2023, the Security Service of Ukraine sent a request to the National Academy of Science regarding the possibility of existing organizations to conduct research on samples of chemical, radiological, biological, and nuclear weapons in their use, said the head of the Russian RCBC troops. So this is this is happening, folks. This is happening. I've got, got defense, defense analysts, analysts feeding, feeding me information. information. So this is the video of the um, of the British politician, and he's going to tell you what. We already know that NATO is desperate to attack Russia and they need some kind of excuse. So this is the Brit British politician, folks. Let's listen to him. I've, I've got, got defense, defense analysts, analysts feeding me information, information and they're in you know, services, services and they're saying, saying that there is going to be a nuclear detonation in Europe. Who, who bought well, it, it could be a dirty, a dirty bomb. bomb. I mean, there's there's a lot of nuclear material floating around in, in Ukraine from their nuclear reactors. I mean, to create contamination, all you need is some conventional explosives and some nuclear material, and you've got a dirty bomb. They may have already been set off in the Donbass area now. And that could be the false flag that starts the war. Yeah. There's, there's, many, there's many ways it can be done. Um, like 9-11. Like 9-11. So let's listen to this one more time, folks. Remember 9-11, folks? I believe that the United States government did that to our country to get us into the war against Iraq, the, ter the war on terror 9-11. This will be another 9-11. And now Russia is exposing this information. This is Andrew Brightman. He is an MP for the British government. He is very outspoken. He is a truth teller. He is a whistleblower. He is trying to warn the world that the United States and NATO is planning a false flag attack in Ukraine. Blame it on Russia this summer so that NATO can get involved in the war. Let's listen one more time. I've got defense analysts feeding me information and they're in you know, services and they're saying that there is going to be a nuclear detonation in Europe. Who, who buy it? Well, it could be a dirty bomb. I mean, there's, there's a lot of nuclear material floating around in, in Ukraine from their nuclear reactors. I mean, to create contamination, all you need is some conventional explosives and some nuclear material, and you've got a dirty bomb. They may have already been set off in the Donbass area now. And that could be the false flag that starts the war. Yeah. There's, there's, many, there's many ways it can be done. Um, like 9-11. Like 9-11. So, folks, I, I, you know, I didn't want to show you this information that we're living on borrowed time right now. You no, know, we are living on borrowed time. Russia uh, bans uh, the media, 81 news outlets of NATO member countries. The Russian Foreign Ministry announced today that it is banning access with Russia, uh, within Russia, to the broadcast of dozens of European Union media outlets in retaliation for a similar ban imposed by the European Union on several Russian media outlets. The European Union announced in May that it has suspended the broadcasting of what it describes as four propaganda networks with links to the Kremlin stripping them of their broadcast rights. So Russia is doing the same thing today. Today the Russian Foreign Ministry retaliated, publishing a list of 81 media outlets from 24 European countries as well as pan-European media outlets whose broadcasts will no longer be accessible on Russian territory. Folks, we are almost there. We are almost there, folks, that uh, it does look like that they are forming. NATO in the United States is forming the excuse to launch a preemptive nuclear strike on Russia. They will set off a dirty bomb in Ukraine. Or maybe it will be in another NATO country or even the United States. Folks, we really don't know.
but they're going to blame it on Russia. I want you to prepare yourself for this. When this happens, you will remember our broadcast that we told you this was going to happen, and we actually told you this last year, that NATO had to do something because, listen, President Putin has not taken the bait. We have been provoking him, provoking him, provoking him. We even did terrorist attacks on his country at least two or three times, killing hundreds of Russian civilians. But Putin has held back. He has held back, held back and not responded. And now NATO is getting worried because they want to enter the war, but they got to have a legitimate excuse. And this would give them the legitimate excuse. We did have a new article uh, coming in that Ukraine has attacked uh, the nuclear radiological site. Um, if I can find it, um, so many crazy things happening. I'm just trying to locate the article. But uh, it does look like that Ukraine um, has attacked one of the radiological sites uh, in the country. Let me see if I can. That's not it either. So we're just going to go down the list. Like I said, we got a lot of uh, a lot of breaking news today. Um, I'm going to try to get this done as fast as I can today because I know your time is valuable. So um, let me see if we can get something else up for you. Let's talk about China and the Philippines. What is happening right now in China and the Philippines? Like I said, there's so many war fronts that's about to open up on the earth. It is hard to cover all of this information, folks. Chinese fleet invades the Philippine economic zone. U.S. responds with 400-kilometer range PRSM missiles successfully hits U.S. Cleveland. Beijing risks triggering the U.S.-Philippine Defense Treaty. So let me get this on the screen right now. A show of power by China in the Spratly Islands complex in the South China Sea. As we speak, China is violating the Philippines' economic zone. 500 nautical miles from the Chinese mainland with amphibious assault ships. Chinese media reports that three amphibious salt ships, I'm not going to name them, conducted a four-day training exercise at an undisclosed location in the South China Sea. The high school focused on search and rescue, uh, live fire damage control, ship-to-ship -ship anchoring, smoke screens, and anti-drone operations. These ships belong to the latest generation of shipbuilding in China, and their role is to deploy a small number of troops and armor on the beaches. The Type 072 armored landing ship of the Cold War era design capable of carrying and landing up to 10 tanks. And then there is the Lucian, a smaller Type 073 capable of carrying five tanks. Both of these amphibious assault ships can conduct rapid landing operations on the reefs as well as other disputed areas in the Spratly Island complex. U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Campbell, when asked what actions by Beijing would trigger the defense treaty, said only that the United States has been in close consultation with the Philippines about it. Our senior officials have been very clear about the circumstances under which we would consider the treaty between the United States and the Philippines to be in place, Campbell said, declining to elaborate. He said the United States has also taken unspecified private steps to address tensions and the Philippines wanted to be cautious in approaching China. They are not seeking a crisis with China. They seek dialogue. So, folks, this is uh, just another war front that is opening up that, um, that China now is conducting landing operations in the South China Sea, that uh, they are getting ready. For once they invade uh, Taiwan, it does look like that it's all going down. We do have another article that the United States wants to re-equip the B-1B bomber with nuclear bombs. Let me get this on the screen uh, for you guys. That uh, if you know anything 
back when uh, Ronald Reagan and Gorbachev, there was a nuclear agreement reached that some of our fighter bombers, like the B-1B bomber, would no longer c carry nuclear bombs. Now, the Biden administration is trying to get at least 31 of these B-1B bombers to be able to carry nuclear bombs once again for our strategic nuclear arsenal. So things are ramping up in the United States, in Russia. We have so much crazy news going on. Um, it's hard just to get to everything, folks. So let me see if I can find another article for you. We do have um, with some more news coming in from the Middle East. We're just going to jump around, folks, because, like I said, we have so much news coming in right now that now Israel is stockpiling food for the major war in Lebanon. This news has just breaking a few hours ago that Netanyahu moves to annex the West Bank, IDF builds massive food warehouses, and deploys forces in the Golden Heights and Lebanon. This is breaking news coming in. This is an emergency alert. Jordan is also deploying forces on its border with Israel. So we are going to have a full-scale war now in the Middle East. We thought this was going to happen about a month ago when Iran attacked Israel, but it did not happen. But now I believe that we are in the time frame of the all-out war in the Middle East at the same time, the all-out war in Europe, and at the same time, <clears throat> an all-out war between China and the United States over Taiwan and North Korea and South Korea, folks. So everything is going down as we predicted over two years ago. Israeli tanks, armored personnel carriers, and artillery forces are now being deployed along the borders with Lebanon and South Lebanon's Golden Heights front as the start of Operation Nears for the invasion of Lebanon. Israel fearing a general conflagration involving hundreds of thousands of Shiites and pro-Iranian militias from across the Middle East is rushing to the aid of Hezbollah, is building up huge emergency warehouses for wartime food supplies. So Israel is fearing that there's going to be hundreds of thousands of Muslims that are going to rush into the area from Turkey, from Iraq, from Syria, from Iran, from Afghanistan, they're all going to rush to help Hezbollah that they are now building up huge emergency warehouses for wartime food supplies. The package uh, contains food for 72 hours for a family of four, which will be delivered by the IDF to Israelis who cannot leave their homes in the event of a war against Hezbollah. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu earlier met with Israeli reservists in northern Israel where he stressed that with help of our fighters, we will achieve our goals until victory. Jordan, the country of Jordan, is also deploying its military forces on the border with Israel due to an increased threat from the West Bank. Toma YPR Dash 765s are growing on the border from Jordan. Watch Merkava battle, battle tanks and self propelled howitzers uh, take part in the upcoming drill. So, folks, this is happening that, uh, that Israel now is getting ready to uh, invade southern Lebanon, that we're going to have a full scale Middle East war. At the same time, we're having a full-scale war in Europe with Russia. So all of these things are going down simultaneously. Hezbollah has proceeded to transfer its fighters from Del Azor, Syria. Their reports speak of expulsion from the Mayadar and uh, a book Kamel sections into Lebanon in anticipation of the upcoming war between Israel and Hezbollah. At the same time, Iraqi-backed militias 
threatened that if the United States helps in Israeli invasion of South Lebanon and the war with Hezbollah, it will be it will target U.S. bases, personnel, and interests throughout the region, more specifically in Iraq. So uh, all I can tell you, folks, is get ready because all of this is going down. Israel annexes the West Bank. In the meantime, the statements of far-right Minister of Finance of Israel, as well as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Bezali uh, Smaltrik, are setting fire. He maintains that a coalition government supporting the uh, annexation of the West Bank. He said, I am documenting the facts in order to make Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, an integral part of the state of Israel. We will establish sovereignty over the area, first on the ground and then legislative. I intend to legalize the new settlements. My mission is to overthrow the establishment of the Palestinian state. So Israel now is talking about the annexation, folks, of the West Bank. So you can see where all of this is going. That it's not looking good, folks. It's not looking good for the world that all of these war fronts right now, all of these war fronts right now are getting ready to go to war. We also have breaking news that the United States, Germany, Canada, and the Netherlands are now urging their citizens to immediately leave Lebanon. This is an emergency update that the governments of the United States, Germany, Canada, and the Netherlands are urging their citizens to leave now immediately. Get out of Lebanon because the war with Israel is about to happen. Let me get this on the screen for you guys. Like I said, uh, the news is coming in so hot and heavy that it is so hard to keep up with everything going on. You know, I really need to do three or four news broadcasts a day, but folks, I'm really not able to do that. This is a lot of work. U.S., Germany, Canada, and the Netherlands urge their citizens to immediately leave Lebanon. And this is the country of Lebanon right here. And uh, this is Syria right next to it. This is the Golden Heights, and Israel is right here. So this is where Israel is going to attack. They're going to start in southern Lebanon and, uh, and keep on going. The United States is urgently warning American citizens in Lebanon to take precautions in case Israel-Hezbollah conflict erupts into a full-scale war. Canada, Germany, and the Netherlands are also telling their citizens, get out now. Israeli Defense Minister Gallant, after his meeting with U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, said significant progress has been made in getting additional weapons and supplies to Israel. So it looks fairly certain that Israel is going to uh, do a ground invasion of Lebanon. Uh, it's getting very serious now, folks. All I can tell you is that the war right now, the war that is to break out, is getting very serious and you need you need to be ready for that because time is running out in the world do you know that time is quickly running out in the world are you ready for what is about to happen is your family ready do you have at least six months of food and water? You know, people say to me all the time, um, we don't have money to buy uh, food to prepare. Well, folks, you can still buy a 20-pound bag of rice at Walmart for about 10 bucks. Do you know that? You can buy a huge bag of rice. Rice and beans will keep you alive for a long time. No, it won't be steak and potatoes. It won't be fried chicken. It won't be all the food that you love. But what you're trying to do is stay alive. So if you buy 100 pounds of rice, which would cost you about, let's see, there's uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah, that's five bags. That'd be about 50 bucks for the rice. 
and you could buy $100 worth of beans, beans and rice. 100 pounds of rice would last you, your family probably at least three or four months, folks. You know, in the time of hardships, you're probably going to be forced to only eat one meal a day. You know, I basically only eat one meal a day. If I eat more than one meal a day, folks, I'm miserable. My stomach swells up. I can't digest the food. It lays there. I feel awful. So I only try to eat one major meal a day. And that's it. And that meal will last me uh, to the rest of the day, folks. And I'm pretty strong. I still got 10 pounds of fat around my stomach I need to lose. But, folks, I'm still, you know, I still got some pretty good guns. You know, I, I, I'm not as big as the prepper guy. I can't lift 500 pounds with my pinky like somebody can, you know. Um, but I'm pretty fit for my age. But, folks, you know, once you're grown, you don't need that much food. You can live off of one meal a day and get by with that and still live a good life. Because all that excess food that you eat, it ends up on your butt and your belly. Do you understand? That's why Americans are so overweight. Because most Americans overeat. And there's one easy way to find out if you're overweight. Well, you go into the bathroom, you strip down, and you look at yourself in the mirror. And if you've got big fat rolls hanging off of your body, that means that you're eating too much. That you could cut back on what you're eating. And it will probably do your body good, folks. You know, overeating is bad. It, it, it makes a, a lot of health issues in your body. So that's just a little advice. You know, a lot of, I don't mean to offend people, but uh, all you got to do is go to Walmart or look at the people going into the store, folks. Most of them's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 pounds overweight, folks. And they wear these skin tight pants that they look like they're almost naked. These, I don't know what they call them, yoga pants. You know, it's kind of gross that you see these, these people walking through Walmart and you can see their butt move as they're walking, you know, and the dimples in their butt cheeks. You know, it's gross, folks. Please, please wear a pair of pants that we don't want to see your butt cheeks, you know, undulate as you're walking to the cash register. And, you know, I don't know why they wear them pants because it's, it's pretty gross. You know, if you're 100 pounds overweight, and, and you're walking through the store in your skin-tight pants. And, you know, I don't want to look at that, folks. Just cover it up. Wear a dress or something. Be modest. You know, my God. You know, would you want to see me in a pair of tights? I wouldn't want to see me in a pair of tights, folks. It would be like looking at a chicken in a pair of tights. I got chicken legs. You know, I got chicken legs. I got skinny little chicken legs. And what if I walk through Walmart in a pair of yoga pants you know, and, and and high heel shoes so you can see my butt cheeks undulate to the cash register. Folks, I don't want people looking at me like that. You know, be, use some common sense. I don't know how, why I got off on that. But anyway, time is growing short. You know, when things do get tough in the world, we're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to make sacrifices. And uh, beans and rice, uh, you can buy canned baked beans if you like baked beans. Beans and rice, pasta, uh, dried goods, canned goods. You can store them for a long time. And sardines is a good source of protein. Sardines and kipper snacks. Uh, you can store all of this food without refrigeration. If your lights go down, if we have an EMP attack, then you can store dry foods without uh, worrying about it, running the food. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now, folks. Like I said, I do believe that we're in World War III already. I do believe that we're living in the apocalypse. And um, things could pop off overnight. We're not going to be, uh, we're not going to have a warning when all of this stuff happens. So you need to be prepared now, both physically and spiritually. If you do not know Jesus Christ, and we are under a sudden nuclear attack, and hundreds of millions of people are vaporized within a matter of minutes, you will not get a chance to repent. Do you understand that? This could be your last day to repent if the worst case scenario happens. And I don't want you going to hell, really. I don't want you going to hell. So if you don't know Jesus Christ, 
if you're not 100% sure that if you died today, you would go to heaven and you want to make sure, if you will say this prayer, Jesus Christ will save you anywhere in the world right now. Just say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, Lord. And I ask you right now to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I do believe that you are the Son of God. And I do believe that you died on that cross and you shed your blood for me. And you rose again the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving all of my sins. And thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Now, a lot of people, they criticize me. Well, you can't get born again by saying a sinner's prayer. Well, yes, you can, folks. Don't you read your Bible? Do I have to give a Bible lesson every video? Do I have to school you on what the Bible says? In John 3.16, the words of Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Matthew 24. You want to read that? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, that means anybody in the world, whosoever believes on his Son, Jesus Christ, shall not perish but have eternal life. That means you are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. In Romans 10, 9, it says that if you shall confess with your mouth, right here where you put all those apple pies and, and chocolate chip cookies, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with your heart man believes unto righteousness, and with your mouth, it's right here, with your mouth confession is made unto salvation, folks. That's what our Bible says. It also says in Romans that all that call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. All. So you can get born again by saying a sinner's prayer. If you believe in your heart that you, you did. But there is no salvation re without repentance. You have to be sorry. You have to acknowledge that you're a sinner and that only through Jesus Christ can you go to heaven, folks. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. But after we do get born again, if you have time, see if a church can baptize you. Now, if you die without being baptized, you're still going to heaven. But if you have time, see if you can be baptized at a church. You can be baptized in a swimming pool, a bathtub, an ocean, a stream, a lake, any body of water. You can be baptized. Baptism is nothing more than pro, uh, proclaiming to the world that you have, give up your, you have given up your sinful life and now you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. You put away that old sinful man. And now you're the righteousness of God. But folks, you know, Christians can willfully sin. Do you know that? I've known a lot of Christians that willfully sin. Because they belong to a certain denomination that they sin all week long. And then they go to Sunday Mass and they get a little juice and wafer. And then the rest of the week they're back sinning. Folks, I work with several of those people. That they were good, good churchgoers. But they were sinners all week long, and then they go got forgiven by their priest. And then Monday through Saturday, they were sinning, cheating on their wives, drinking, doing all of these wicked things. And yet on Sunday, they're okay again. They're ready to go sin. And folks, you can willfully sin against God. Do you know that? Jesus calls that the lukewarm Christian in Revelation chapter 3. Jesus said, I would rather you be cold or hot because you are lukewarm. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. That means I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. You're not going to heaven if you're a lukewarm Christian. If you've got one foot in the church and one foot in the world, you're not going to heaven. Jesus tells us that himself. Do you understand that? You have responsibilities as a Christian to walk the walk and talk the talk. You just can't say a prayer and then Monday night you're in the bar trying to pick up some hot chick to take her home and bang her all night. Do you understand that? You cannot willful sin against God and be a Christian at the same time. You got to choose. You got to choose, folks. 
And if you can't handle this language, you don't need to be watching our channel because I'm one of the realest per people you will ever run into. This is the real deal here. We don't play games on our channel. I'm speaking to you in a language that you will understand. This is one of the realest YouTube channels you will ever see. Because I don't mince my words. I tell you the truth so you won't go to hell, folks. How many Christians that go to church are living in sin with somebody that's they're not, they're not their husband or wife, folks? I know of several. They're shacked up together. A man and a woman, it's a girlfriend. They're eternally engaged. They've been engaged for three years, five years, ten years, fifteen years. She's got the ring on her finger, but the dude will never marry her. He never will marry her, but they're engaged. They're living in sin. That's called fornication. Do you think God's going to take you to hell just because, uh, I'm sorry, heaven, just because you go to church on Sunday and sing pretty songs? You're living in sin. You're living in willful sin against God. You're not going to heaven because you're a lukewarm Christian. And that includes all the sins, folks. Christianity is more yes than saying a prayer. You have to walk the walk and talk the talk. Jesus said a good tree cannot produce evil fruit. And an evil tree cannot produce good fruit. What fruit are you producing in your life? Folks, Let's get the sin out of our life. Let's walk in love toward everybody. Folks, listen, I don't hate anybody. I don't care what color you are. You can be black, red, purple, green, orange. I don't care what color you are, folks. I don't hate you. You could be Russian, Puerto Rican, Chinese, Mexican, Jewish, whatever uh, country you're from. I don't hate you. You could be Muslim. I don't hate you if you're a Muslim person. Jesus said we're supposed to love one another as God has loved us. God will judge the wicked. Strive to do good in your life. Strive to do good to other people. Help other people, folks. If you see somebody in need, help them if, you're, if it's possible. If it's possible, help them. Lay up your treasures in heaven. You know, we all have to pay our bills. We live in this world that requires money. So we all have to pay our bills. Even preachers have to pay bills, folks. Listen, and that's what I am. I'm a preacher. I'm an evangelist. I'm really not a pastor, really. I'm not a pastor. I don't have the uh, heart of a pastor. I have the heart of an evangelist because I want to get people saved. A pastor is more like a mother. He nurtures you and, uh, you know, and he coddles you and takes care of you. I'm pretty rough around the edges, as you have noticed. I'm rough. But you have to be rough to get it through some knuckleheads that if they don't change their ways, they're going to be burning in hell, folks. That's why I'm rough. That's why God chose me, because I can talk to the average person. And I'm not afraid of anybody, folks. I'm not afraid to open my big mouth and let you know the truth. And you're not going to hear a lot of this stuff in church that you go to because they are afraid. They are afraid to offend you and tell you the truth. So thank you for watching our channel. Like I said, so much breaking news. Let me check the news uh, wire one more time to see if there's anything else. But like I said, we'll try to be uh, back on uh, and keep you guys abreast. Um, we do have another mil we do have another article, folks. Like I said, I thought we were done, but the news just keeps coming and coming and coming and coming we talked about this was the first article that we have now we have some more additional information see all you guys that left when I started preaching you're gonna miss the news right now because we have more information you should have stuck around development nightmare for Kiev North Korea sends the first military forces to Donbass with unlimited supply of ammunition and missiles so this just came in just a few minutes ago, folks, that there's going to be North Korean soldiers. We're going to give you some additional information. A few days after signing the defense pact between Russia and North Korea, Paul Young announces that it will send troops to Ukraine. War News 24-7 has revealed the deployment of North Korean forces since last March of last year. And we reported on that. 
North Korean troops are expected to arrive on the battlefield next month. Some reports suggest engineer units will be sent to Donetsk within weeks to support Russia's war with Ukraine, according to North Korea's Central Military Commission. Some other sources talk about a North Korean army division. That's 10,000 troops. Most likely, the beginning will be the engineer unit, and then the North Korean division will follow. Either way, the development will be a nightmare scenario for the Ukrainians. According to War News 24-7, at the same time, North Korea was willing to send up to 50,000 troops to Ukraine in exchange for nuclear technology, ICBMs, and satellites from Russia. Of course, these forces would make use of the Soviet artillery stock available to the North Korean military, which is unlimited, folks. So, like I said, this is going to happen, that there is going to be a deployment of North Korean soldiers. Um, this is very, very worrying. This is uh, uh, from the, our Pentagon. He said, I think that if I were the leadership of North Korea's military personnel, I would question my choice to send forces to become cannon fodder in an illegal war. Well, folks, we overthrew their government. Do you know that, Mr. Pentagon official? Your CIA overthrew the legitimate government in 2014. U.S. Senator says, Russia to get an unlimited stockpile of missiles. The signed agreement on the strategic partnership has the fourth chapter, which provides for mutual military assistance in the event of attack against one of the countries by the third party. At the same time, King Jong-un pointed out Russia is already facing aggression from the entire NATO bloc. U.S. Congressman Michael Waltz, who represents Florida in the House of Representatives, commenting on the deal, said this is bad news for both Ukraine and the United States Waltz a veteran of the war in Afghanistan added, North Korea has been stockpiling weapons, missiles and more missiles for the last 70 years. Russia will receive an unlimited supply of all of these weapons, including ballistic missiles. And North Korea has its own interest in this because it will receive advanced Russian missiles and nuclear technologies, technologies and reinforcement in the space program, and they will be able to use all of this against the whole world. Waltz called the deal between Russia and North Korea an alliance of evil. So, like I said, this does look like it's going to happen, that North Korea will be sending uh, tens of thousands of troops probably before this is over. We are about to step in uncharted territory, World War III. People have been talking about this for the last 50 years, and it is upon us right now. Time is running out. All I can say is get your life straight with Jesus Christ because we don't know when all of this is going to happen, but you need to be assured that you would go to heaven in the event of a nuclear war. So God bless you. Please share our videos out. Please consider joining our channel. I believe this is one of the best news broadcasts on YouTube. Please help our channel grow. Our memberships are only $1.99 a month. That's only 50 cents a week, folks, for the best news on YouTube. For the best news on YouTube. God bless you. Remember, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. Bye-bye.